Hi, my name is Chris Borowski. I'm the expert manager in Smash Poland. In today's video, I would like to show you and talk a little bit about our twin rotor rotary rake Z2. So at the very beginning, we need to keep in mind that this machine uh, is uh, big in size. So for transport purposes, four arms, raking arms, and the rear wheel axle are mounted with the use of a regular machine bolt. It is because often those arms are removed for transport. So upon delivery, make sure that you change those bolts for a slotted spring pins, like the other on the carousel. So once we change the bolts for slotted spring pins, we can connect the machine to the tractor. Z2 rake has a standard two-point hitch connection, so we need to uh, attach lower link arms to the to the headstock here. Uh, once that uh, once this is done, the next step would be uh, an installation of the PTO shaft. The PTO shaft needs to be cut uh, to the size if necessary. Detailed instructions how to do it you can find in operator's manual. Once the shaft is cut and installed, next thing is to uh, plumb in the hydraulics. This rake has three hydraulic hoses, two of them which needs to be connected to one section of the tractor are responsible for changing operation width. The third one which goes to a separate section is responsible for putting the machine to transport position. Once the hydraulics is connected to the uh, to the tractor, then we need to put the road light plug in and we are set to go. In this particular machine, we've got an optional hydraulic system installed. The system consists of a simple control panel and the hydraulic block. And it allows for locking one rotor in headland position and operating with the other one by means of hitting a button on this simple control panel. So we've got everything hooked up to the tractor. Uh, the next and very important parameter is to set the headstock height. Usually uh, we set the headstock height of the ground for uh, 45 centimeters, which is about uh, a feet and four inches of the ground. However, tractors vary and the general rule how to set up a machine is to keep the rotor level to the ground. So the space between the end of the tine and the ground should be even all the way around the rotor. Because we don't want to get any debris, dirt or stones into our precious feed. Z2 rake has a pivoting headstock and the force steering system. So it means that the rear transport wheels are going to follow the track of the tractor. Everything is controlled by means of those steering rods. As it comes to the transport chassis, uh, this rake has two of them. Uh, transport chassis is based on three tandem axles. So it has six wheels each, which helps and allows for a great ground following in two dimensions. Four wheels out of six are caster. Remember to check tire pressure before the first use. Needed pressure is marked on this decal here. So what is more about the uh, working chassis is that it can be mm, fine-tuned in this axis by means 
of this turnbuckle here. It has a additional height adjustment on those two pins, so it means that the chassis can be lifted or lowered down a bit. It is dedicated for soft or firm fields. Because of the larger size of the machine and the height restrictions, machine is delivered without outer tine arms. Before starting the operation, we need to reinstall the tine arms. Because this is a central delivery rake, it means that it has a left-hand side and a right-hand side tine arm. Make sure that you install left tine arm on the, on the left rotor and the right tine arm on the right rotor. So once the tine arms are installed, the next step is to open up the protective guards. To do it, we need to remove the pin, lie the guard down and secure it with this pin back. Now the guards are down and the machine is ready for operation. Drive transmission in this central delivery rake uh, is based on PTO shafts and gearboxes. So first, power is transferred via uh, main PTO shaft, which has a, a wide angle joint on the implement side. Then it goes to the built-in PTO uh, that PTO is built in the first part of the drawbar. Then the power goes to the intersecting gearbox, which is mounted uh, underneath the mainframe. Then it's distributed on the left and on the right uh, working unit via PTO shafts to the rotor rotary gearboxes. Those two shafts are equipped with the overrun overrunning clutches. Three gearboxes that we have here are a standard type of gearboxes that Samash uses in uh, its equipment. So it is an oil operating gearbox. The oil used uh, for this application is 80 weigh 90. It should be changed after first 50 hours or after 500 hours or at least once a year. Remember that this machine has a lot of grease points and greasing is really important. Grease points are marked with this decal here. As it comes to the gearboxes in Samash rakes, we've got two types of uh, rotary gearboxes. Uh, in this particular model, so in the larger model, 840, we've got a gearbox with the quick connecting rod replacement system. So it means that in case of breaking a tine arm during operation, change of the connecting rod is fairly fast and easy because you need to take four bolts out and then you can remove the housing with the connecting rod out of the gearbox. It cuts uh, the downtime um, to minimum because there is no need of taking the whole gearbox out of the frame. So change of the connecting rod can be done uh, with the gearbox mounted to the frame. 
those gearboxes have three plugs so at the top is a breather uh, which can be used as a place uh, to put the oil um, into the gearbox. Uh, they have a access side plug and the drain plug from the bottom. In this uh, gearbox we have a side glass as well to check the oil level uh, in, the, uh, in the gearbox. So as it comes to the working unit suspension, so it is suspended on the two pivoting pins at the end of the telescopic arm. It has two hydraulic cylinders installed on the arm and the gauge. The big cylinder puts the machine to transport position and it is a single acting cylinder. We have a double acting small cylinder which is installed here and it is responsible for setting and adjusting working width of the whole machine. The gauge here tells you what working width is the machine set at. If the indicator is in this position it's the smallest working width and if the indicator is on the other side it means that the machine is uh, spread as wide as possible uh, with the total width of 27 and a half feet which is 8.4 meters. The Z2 840 rate has a special plate. This plate works as a headland limiter so it limits the height of the carousel when lifting uh, the machine to headland position and then it has another function which is a transport latch so once the machine is lifted to transport position this catch needs to catch this part of the arm and it secures the machine during transport. So if you want to put the machine to operation mode when you get to the field you need to pull those cords from the tractor's cab. Once those latches are disengaged then you can safely put the machine to operation mode. So we went through the suspension system, we went through the hydraulic cylinders, the gauge. Uh, the last thing that is worth mentioning uh, is this hydraulic uh, block which is installed on top of the machine. So this is the heart of this optional system I mentioned at the beginning which allows for locking the working unit in headland position and operate only with one side down. So uh, we've got to the field, we've got everything hooked up to the tractor, hydraulics is plumbed in, tire pressure is set, all the grease points are, mm, are greased, uh, the machine is prepared uh, to operate on the field. The very last thing that we need to do before we start raking is to set the clearance between the ground and the, mm, and, and the time. So, in order to keep the material as clean as possible, we need to keep the distance uh, from the ground for about an inch or maybe a little bit less than that. Change of the operation or working height of the, of the rotor can be done by means of this crank handle here. 
we have a deco here saying that the clockwise uh, rotation will bring the rotor up and counterclockwise rotation will uh, uh, take the whole rotor down. So this setting it needs to be done, it needs to be set once we, go, once we get to the field. And remember that this machine uh, operates on 300 RPMs uh, at, and not more than 350. The gearboxes are set or are rated for 540, but to get the most out of the out of the machine, we recommend to run the machine at 300 RPMs. So that were the settings and adjustments and some features on the uh, Z2 center delivery rate. Remember that in case of any doubts or concerns or any problems, always consult operator's manual or contact Samash directly. Thank you.